here in sunny Barcelona and today I'm with Farhad Fezi, a professor of ophthalmology at the University of Geneva. Um, Farhad, I'd like to talk about excellence. So you opened the Elsa Institute in Zurich earlier this year. It's a state-of-the-art Swiss centre of excellence in ophthalmology that was built to your own exacting specifications. You offer laser refractive surgery at Elsa. You had the option of purchasing any eczema laser on the market. So what were you looking for in a laser? Um, that's a very interesting question, Mark. Um, our main target is not cosmetic, but therapeutic refractive laser surgery. And um, uh, having, having an open budget, I was free to choose any existing eczema laser platform on the market. And to be very honest, if you just perform a very standard procedure, most eczema systems on the market today do quite a comparable job. But the difference comes up when you look at unusual corneas or irregular astigmatism. And this is where I had to take a decision which platform would allow me to treat patients, for example, that uh, have irregular astigmatism due to scar formation after trauma, keratoconus patients after cross-linking, etc. And this is where I opted, I consciously opted for the Amaris platform. Okay, so what treatments do you offer with the Schrind Amaris 1050 RS? Um, I do a lot of um, retreatments uh, of previously failed um, uh, refractive laser surgery, for example, uh, too small of an optical zone. These are patients from the early days even of PRK who come to see us who had a PRK for high myopia 10, 15 years ago. But there are also recent patients that for, for some reasons received decentered ablations and we have to recenter the whole ablation and bring it into the middle, enlarge the zone. And then the interesting patients for me are patients with scars, could be scars after a severe infection and irregular astigmatism. And my, my low, most beloved baby, of course, is all sorts of keratoconus related irregular astigmatism, where we stabilize the cornea first, wait, and then try to assess the visual problems. So what is it like to use as a surgeon? I like it because um, um, I love the, the, the way the platform uh, pays attention to detail. Let's just give you uh, some examples. Um, the most interesting feature I like in this platform is that if I look at the whole pyramid of Cernica coefficients, um, other platforms, platforms force me to either switch on or switch off the aberrations. And in, in, uh, in this type of surgery, in irregular astigmatism, it's, it's all about tissue sparing. So I have to find strategies not to remove too much tissue, let's say in a keratoconus cornea, and still achieve an effect. So I have to play with each single operation, and this is what the Amaris allows me to do. And in fact, this was the selling point to me. I could play with the entire Zernica pyramid until I have a good compromise between increase in visual acuity or quality and uh, not too much of tissue removal. So it delivers excellence? In my eyes, it does, yeah. It is, in my eyes, the, the best platform on the market um, for irregular astigmatism, yeah, for unusual corneas. So these are challenging patients, but, uh, you know, what do they think about the results? Um, these, these patients are challenging on one hand, and they are very different from the normal cosmetic patient coming in. And as in every procedure, it's, it's a lot about discussing the potential result with the patient. And in this type of therapeutic refractive laser surgery, the aim is not to get rid of glasses. It is, the aim is rather to gain lines with glasses, sure. because many of these patients come in and see 2040, 2063 with the best correction. And their aim is to, to have a better quality of life still wearing glasses. And so we explain to them that it's, it's a long process they go through and they might require not only one, but two or three laser surgeries before they get to the result. Okay. Have you used the Amherst platform's transepithelial treatment modality, TransPRK? Yes, and I'm happy with the results. So I was reluctant to, uh, to rely on a nomogram for epithelial thickness in a population of which I know has, nobody has the same epithelial thickness. But once I started, I was really happy with the results. So if you have a if you have a virgin cornea that has never been operated before, then the nomogram that is behind the epithelial ablation apparently is so precise that my patients have really good results and the target is achieved in a high percentage. So I, I uh, perform almost exclusively trans-PRK now, except for 
specific corneas where a mechanical abrasion would be a, a strategic advantage. So how does it compare with LASIK in terms of speed, efficacy and safety? Um, LASIK is a procedure that introduces an additional step, right? Sure. You've, you create a flap and whenever you do something additional, you might have complications related to the additional steps. And PRK or trans-PRK is certainly, in, at least in, in my hands, I prefer it to LASIK because I see less of a complication rate. You have an open surface, but everybody nowadays is, knows how to deal with an open surface. And uh, with regard to speed of the closure, the, the recently introduced Smart Pulse technology gives us a much smoother surface. Um, I will probably also switch from unilateral PRK to bilateral PRK because the speed of closure is much faster and the increase in visual acuity is also much faster. Okay. So is there a particular group of patients that might benefit from trans-PRK? Uh, I, think, I think all patients might benefit if they fall into the inclusion criteria. And, and if I have the slightest doubt about the biomechanics of the cornea, um, I, I'm very, I'm very easily, I very easily do the transition from recommending a LASIK, a fem to bilateral fem to LASIK to a bilateral trans-PRK. Okay. So what has been your experience with the Amaris for treating presbyopes? I have relatively little experience as per now. I have treated a few patients last year with good results, but uh, as we all know, patient pre-op patient selection is so essential to this to this type of treatment. So um, you can you can have fantastic results. Few patients I have treated were were happy, but again, I think it was a it was a good it was a good selection of patients. Um, I like the science behind the overall concept, combining micro monovision with a certain multifocality of the cornea. So I, I appreciate and understand the, the scientific reasoning behind it and I, I will uh, intensify now my presbyopic treatments in the next months to see the outcomes. So the ones that you've done, the outcomes have been good, but what have the recovery times been like? The recovery times were, were fast. Uh, I've, I've exclusively done uh, femtolasic procedures combined with, uh, with this pre presbyopic approach and uh, the recovery was very fast. So what do you think about the overall performance of the Amaris platform? I like working with this platform because it offers me both worlds. I can use it as a standard working horse for the, for the daily minus three diopterosphere um, patient coming in, but I also can highly customize it to, to meet the needs of a, a subgroup of patients that is very special and very demanding also. It goes without saying that you're a world-renowned surgeon and a leading figure in corneal cross-linking. Um, when we've published articles on your work, it's often accompanied by a photograph of you performing the procedure, and the instrument in that photograph is a Schwinn CXL 365 Vario. So are you happy with that? I like the Vario because um, it offers me versatility. It has, um, it has a decent irradiation profile, and it gives me the option of using different fluences. We all know that certain of these fluences are not yet clinically validated for keratoconus, but uh, the Vario offers 3, 9 and 18 milliwatts. And we know now that 9 milliwatts seem to work really nicely clinically. So I switched from 3 to 9, which reduces my surgical time from 30 to 10 minutes. And I have the option of using 18 milliwatts, which we also do, for example, in the treatment of infectious keratitis. But of course, the ELS Institute is not just about treating patients as a world-class research institute too. So I've seen a few papers of yours where you've used an Amaris 750S for research work. Yeah. Uh, what's it like using the Amaris for that purpose? That's, that's my passion. I'm a, I'm a surgeon, but also deeply involved in cell biology. So one thing we were looking at is how can we improve the results, the surgical outcomes in keratoconus patients with irregular astigmatism. And the idea was to first stabilize these corneas with cross-linking and then do not perform a PRK in the same session, but rather wait until the cornea, the cornea's reaction to the cross-linking is stable, which might take 12 months or even 24 months. So it's a two-step procedure. And then in a second step, perform a wavefront-guided PRK, looking at the Zernicke pyramid, deciding how much tissue can be sacrificed for the better outcome. And to do so, one important element was missing, which is how much do we ablate 
how much does an external laser pulse a blade in a cornea that has been crosslinked before? Because there are additional covalent bonds introduced into the tissue. So do we need the same energy? Do we need 20% more, 30% more, 10% less? And to investigate this, we went back to the lab and lasered some hundreds of, uh, of porcine corneas. And interestingly, the number is almost the same throughout the entire corneal depth. It's 12% more energy, which means that if I want to correct one diopter in a crosslink keratoconus cornea, I have to correct 1.12 diopters. Um, and that's just an additional level of precision we can add into the software. But uh, Schwind is planning to introduce this concept into one of the future software updates. You, you could have uh, performed this research with any laser platform. What made the, the Amaris platform particularly useful? Why did you choose it? I could have done this research with any type of XML laser platform, but uh, to be honest, no other XML laser platform was open to investigate these issues. And this is one of the reasons I like to work with this particular XML laser platform, because the Techniques is one thing, the team behind the techniques is another. And I like the Schwinn family because they are open to innovation, they are open to incorporate unusual approaches to, to the field. So what is it like working with the people at Schwind? Um, what I like about working with them is that uh, they are very responsive. If I have, for example, a, a very special patient that uh, gives me a challenging topography and I would like to have the input of the engineers of Schwind. Um, I have a very direct and open communication with them and I get, and they are very responsive. So I get my responses quickly. You talked earlier about them being a family company. Is that important to you? A yes and no. It's not the fact per se that it is a family company, but it is a, a company that is completely dedicated to one product. And the size of this company allows them to be extremely fast in their responses. So it is not a super tanker that needs half a year to get back to you when you have, when you have any type of, of in innovative input to give, but they react within hours to days. And this is something I really appreciate in this company. So application development then is uh, much easier than with a, a company that says nimble as Schwind then. Exactly. So that they're very uh, receptive to your feedback. And this is what I like. They are very open to any type of constructive criticism, even if it would be to the disadvantage of the system, because their response simply was, well, if you think that this would be worthwhile investigating, and even if it would be a negative result for us, well, we take it as, as an opportunity to make our platform better. And this is what I'm looking for. Excellent. So you're happy with your purchase? I'm happy with it. Farhad Faisi, thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers.